Hello, and welcome to Military History Inside Out, brought to you by War Scholar and located at warscholar.org. We talk about military history from ancient times to modern and everything in between. I'm Chris Alvarez, and thank you for listening. This episode is part of a new series I'm including with my author interviews. I speak with specialists and experts on various wars, where we summarize specific wars from start to finish, sometimes from the perspective of one side. I'll also post these episodes on YouTube at War Scholar 1945 with maps and graphics. Thanks again for listening. I'm speaking with Professor Pierre Asselin, a specialist on the Vietnam War. Uh, today he will be telling us about the Vietnam War from the North Vietnamese perspective. All right, Professor, thank you for speaking with me. Oh, thank you for having me, Chris. It's a real, it's a real, it's a real pleasure. So um, tell me, uh, let's start with the beginning of the war. What year did it start? And um, tell it to me from the North Vietnamese perspective, how it progressed. Well, it, it's, you know, for Americans, right, that, that the war really begins, I mean, I mean, at, at the earliest when Kennedy sends in the advisors, uh, but most conventionally in, in 65, right, when, when, when the first combat soldiers are deployed to South Vietnam and, and, and the U.S. initiates sustained bombings of, of the North, Operation Rolling Thunder. Uh, but from the North Vietnamese standpoint, the war, the, the war began much, much earlier. As, as you know, you know, after, after World War II, no sooner had Ho Chi Minh, the leader of the Communist Party of Vietnam, declared independence than, than, than France, which had colonized Vietnam for the better part of the, of the last century, uh, tried to come back to, to, to kind of reimpose itself after being thrown out by the Japanese during, during the Second World War. And that led to an eight-year war uh, against France that, that resulted in the partition of Vietnam at the 17th parallel uh, as a result of the Geneva Accords of, of, of 1954. And that, that's how North and, and South Vietnam came about, right? So, so after 54, we have, we have a, a Northern Vietnamese government uh, controlled by communists and then a Southern Vietnamese government kind of beholden to France and then to the Americans based in, in Saigon. And, and, and from, from, from the moment the war against France ended, uh, uh, Vietnamese communist authorities based in the north started planning for the reunification of their country. So, so in that sense, you could argue that the Vietnam War, the so-called Vietnam War, the Second Indochina War, began for them in, in as early as, as, as 1954. Although, although initially, uh, what, what they're hoping to achieve is, is, is what they call the liberation of the south, and an eventual reunification under communist rule by peaceful, relatively, uh, mostly, mostly diplomatic means. And then, and then as, as it becomes clear that the Geneva Accords are not going to produce a favorable outcome, uh, we see, we see the communist regime in the North slowly but gradually uh, get behind an insurgency in southern Vietnam to bring about the collapse of the regime in Saigon by, by force, by violence. But, but what we notice, Chris, is that, is that by the time American advisors are sent by Kennedy in 1961, we've had for almost two years, since 1959, uh, a, pretty, a pretty healthy insurgency uh, going on in southern Vietnam. And so from the, from the North Vietnamese, from the communist standpoint, it, it could be argued that, that, that their war for, for reunification began in 59. Uh, for me personally, having, having researched that closely and, and having worked in, in, in the archives of, of, of Vietnam, I, I like the year 1964 a little more uh, because, because in, in, in 64, that's when northern Vietnam starts sending the first complete units of North Vietnamese troops. Uh, and so, so in terms of when big war begins, right, not just, not just insurgency and counterinsurgency, but, but, but big war. I would argue that it starts in, in late 54, in late 64, sorry, when the first North Vietnamese combat units arrive in the south. Um, and, then, and, then, and then the following year, the Americans kind of come in and join, join a war that already exists, if you will. What uh, part of South Vietnam was the insurgency focused on? And when the actual North Vietnamese troops came in, what part of the country did they first take over or, or enter into? So uh, it's a great question. So... So the, the, initially, the insurgency is, I guess, hottest, if you want to use that term, in mountainous regions, the so-called central highlands of, 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 of southern Vietnam, and then in, in, in the Delta area, 
um, those those were areas that were that were problematic for for the South Vietnamese government, supported by the Americans to to pacify right mountainous regions, Delta, Delta uh, those those offer plenty of cover and and not only during the insurgency phase but even during the war phase, uh, communist troops were always more active in 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 those particular theaters and when when North Vietnamese troops enter join join the fray. Uh, in large numbers, starting in, in late '64, uh, the bulk of their activities, uh, the bulk of their operations, will unfold in the, in the Central Highlands, in in the the upper the upper third of of, of South Vietnam, and then and then in the rest of Vietnam, specifically in in in, in the southern part of South Vietnam, uh, the forces combating the regime in Saigon there and the Americans will be will be so-called Viet Cong forces, right? Uh, indigenous southerners who, who belong to the National Front for the Liberation of South Vietnam, the, the, the NLF. So what was the first major clash between the American forces and the no North Vietnamese? Did they initiate it or did it happen by accident? North Vietnam launches its first major campaign in November of 1964. So, so, so this, this tends to be forgotten. So, so essentially, like the, the first major battles of the Vietnam War actually happened before the Americans show up. Mm. So, so, and, and we're here. We're talking about major combat operation again. This, this is an insurgent warfare. This is this, this is borderline what we would call conventional warfare, mm. right? At, at least by, by 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 Vietnamese standards. So, so Hanoi launches a big offensive that's effectively intended to bring about the collapse of the regime in Saigon before the Americans come in. They, they know the Americans are about to intervene, uh, but, but as of late 64, Hanoi is confident that they can actually win this once and for all before the Americans show up. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then, as it turns out, the South Vietnamese army resists better than, than leaders in Hanoi anticipated, and then, and then the war becomes Americanized, right? So, so as, as, as you, your listeners probably know, uh, March of, of 65, the Marines land in in Da Nang, but it's but you know at first the American military footprint in South Vietnam is very very light. It's not until later that year that the American troop level starts to exceed a uh, hundred thousand, and it's it's also not until late '65 that we start witnessing the first major clashes between North Vietnamese and American soldiers. Some of your listeners might 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 have seen the movie uh, We Were Soldiers Once. That's, that's the so-called Ia Drag Valley battle of, of, of later 65. That's a very significant engagement because it's, it's really the first major clash between American and, 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 and North Vietnamese forces. So, so even though, again, right, uh, the Americans come in early in 65, it's not until later that year that, that, that we start witnessing the first of what, what ends up becoming several uh, major clashes between 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 American forces and these kind of these mainline, uh, highly trained, very disciplined North Vietnamese Army troops. If I, if I may, Chris, you know, I, I think there's there's a, there's, a, there's a very you know there's a popular misconception we should dismiss here. I, I mean, if, if if you watch enough war movies, right, you often see that you know the the, the, the guys and, and 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 women who fought the Americans dressed in pajamas and suggesting that these are just peasants who, who, who learned how to shoot. Your listeners should, should know that when we talk about the troops that came from the north, the North Vietnamese Army regulars, those guys were as well equipped, as well trained, as professional as, as the Americans themselves. So, uh, you know, when, when, and, and if, if you talk to, 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 to Americans who fought in Vietnam uh, and who fought, who encountered North Vietnamese troops, they, they'll, they'll tell you just, just how difficult an adversary they, 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 they were. So, so, so 65, late 65 is, is for the first time Americans, you know, encounter North Vietnamese troops. And through that encounter, which, which you know, the Americans, it, 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 it's an American victory. But at the same time, through that encounter, Americans really learn to respect their adversary. American, American troops in Vietnam really, really develop a new respect. For, for their adversaries and, and really realize that, that these are not, this is not a peasant army, this is something else entirely. Mm -hmm. Now, did the North Vietnamese at this point, were they trying to initiate battle? What was their, their goal and what was the next big clash that they had with the Americans? It's another great question, Chris. So when you look back upon the history of the war, I, I, I forget the precise number, but it's, it's somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of all armed clashes during the Vietnam War were initiated by, by communist forces. Mm. 
and this this was deliberate, right? To, as much as they could, uh, uh, the, the, the North Vietnamese Army and 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 uh, the, the so-called Viet Cong forces avoided engaging the Americans in combat. And and when they did, they tried to make sure that it was always on their terms. Mm -hmm. So uh, overwhelmingly, throughout the course of the war, starting starting in in in, in sixty five, it's 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 America's enemy that decides where and when uh, fighting will take place. And it's, it's also America's enemies uh, who, who, who decide the scope of the battles that will be, that will be waged. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and, and, that, and that's the element also that, that, that became so challenging for, for you know, young soldiers, young Marines, you know, uh, 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 fighting, fi fighting in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. they, they're essentially, you know, humping the boonies, as, 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 as they would say, until until they make contact, and again, almost invariably, making contact meant getting shot at mm -hmm. first. I mean, one of the ultimate ir ironies of all of this is that early on it becomes obvious that this is how the Vietnamese have chosen to fight the war. Mm -hmm. But but then the American strategy kind of you know accepts that premise. You know, the, the, you're probably familiar, Chris, Chris, with you know Westmoreland strategy of search and destroy, right? Mm -hmm. But search and destroy was essentially about going out into the Central Highlands, into the Delta searching for the enemy, finding him, and then destroying him, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, but, but, but that was the thing. It, essentially, American commanders are sending military, uh, U.S. military units out into the most remote areas of southern Vietnam until they get shot at, at which point uh, Americans are expected to call for artillery, air support, uh, naval gun support, uh, and, and, then, and then crush their, their enemies. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know... Ever, ever the resourceful combatants, uh, the North Vietnamese and their Viet Cong allies learn early on that 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 once you make contact with the Americans, you you better disengage within within seven to eight minutes. Otherwise, otherwise you then you have to deal with American air power, American artillery, American naval gun gunfire. Mm -hmm. So 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 while while you know, there they were these these major campaigns fought throughout the war. By the, and by, by, by official communist accounts, there were approximately 50 of them. Mm. On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, the, 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 the Vietnam War is, 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 is about kind of this, this slow-intensity kind of warfare. Mm. And it's, 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 about, it's about ambushes and counter-ambushes. I mean, in a way, what we would call insurgency and counter-insurgency mm. or, or, or quintessential guerrilla warfare. Can you, talk, can you name some of the major battles between 65 and the Tet Offensive, just briefly go through them, the, the most uh, so, significant ones. I've, I've got the, 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 the Vietnamese names of those of those of those battles because mm -hmm. I've, I've I've just been working on that, uh, and and uh, I'm I'm not sure about their Vietnamese equivalent, but you know when when, when you talk so the, the, there's there's an operation in July '65 uh, that that the Vietnamese called the Dum Swai. Uh, Operation, mm -hmm. um, and then and then uh, th there's a, a variety of of, of, of different um, uh, operations that, that that they they they, they conduct with a view to kind of creating liberated areas and expanding those so-called uh, liberated areas. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in in April of '66, there's a so-called North Bing Bing offensive. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's an April of '66, shortly after the Western Sun King offensive. So so those are kind of the the, the major battles that that were fought by the the North Vietnamese. Uh, again, mostly in the Central Highland region, um, and so and, and and for for for, for many of these, uh, you have you have kind of a, a, an American uh, uh, named counterpart. I think I think that as I recall correctly, the the, the one operation that the Vietnamese. Uh, uh, actually referred to by the American name is is, is Junction City, um, which took place in in, in early 1967, um, and I'm assuming that's because Junction City was largely an American initiative that Vietnamese commanders decided to to meet, if you will, uh, and to, to 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 partake in. And um, so then was t the Tet Offensive. That's uh, notable. What was the uh, North Vietnamese goal in that one? So it's really interesting, right? Because because people look back at the offensive and they say, oh, it's a, you know, it's it's a, it's such a genius offensive because it completely destroyed American morale. Um, as as it turns out, so so again, we we now know from from uh, relevant uh, uh, North Vietnamese materials 
that that the goal of the offensive of the Tet offensive was never to have a psychological impact in the United States. What what they're really hoping to achieve through the Tet offensive is the destruction of the South Vietnamese army, hmm. which was supposed to lead to a general uprising of the of the southern population and the eventual capitulation of the regime in Saigon. Mm-hmm. So 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 the Tet offensive, I mean it's 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 a massive commitment of manpower and material resources by the communist side. And there's no there's no question that they they, they fall way short of, of their goal. I mean they, they lose more than forty thousand troops uh, forty thousand dead. This is this excludes those who are wounded, which, which presumably exceeded a hundred thousand uh, during during the the, the the main Tet offensive and then and then follow up campaigns later in in, in sixty eight. But then but then you know to their to their surprise, some some of these very very powerful images, and I'm sure I'm sure your listeners are familiar with them, right? Like the the, the storming of the embassy in Saigon. Uh, the execution of a Viet Cong prisoner by the Saigon police chief. You know, some of these images end up suggesting to uh, uh, significant segments of the American population that, that, that the war in Vietnam is being lost, uh, that, that if Saigon can be kept secure and safe, then, then the rest of the country will never be secure and safe. And so, and that's, that's really because of America's own response to the that offensive that, that then the Vietnamese can, can claim that this was a psychological victory and mm. then claim that this was the effect we were going for all along. Mm. But, but again, right, when this is something that, that they would capitalize upon. But, but when, when we look at the resolutions, there's a, there's a famous resolution passed by the Communist Party in, in 1967 called Resolution 14, which outlines the plan for the that offensive. Mm. There's really nothing in there. About, about having the kind of impact psychologically in the U.S. that the offensive had. So, so it, was, it was, I guess, kind of a, a pleasant surprise. And it, it, to me, it's the one element that basically salvages mm-hmm. the, 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 the disaster that the that, 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 that offensive was for, for communist forces. So what do the North Vietnamese do between then and then 1973 when the Americans finally leave? What, what battles occur uh, to their benefit? They, they, they lay very, very low. Uh, when there's, there's a, and, and this again, this is, this, this is one of the things that I think a lot of, of people fail to to recognize, right? Uh, so there's a, there's a, there's a change uh, 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 of, of American military leadership in, in Vietnam, where, where, where Smallin is out, and then Abrams comes in, uh, and then and then and then you know people like Lewis Sorley uh, and, and other authors have argued that oh you know Abrams coming in. Uh, and, and kind of the reduction of, of, of communist military operations shows that Abrams knew what he was doing a lot more than Westmoreland. Mm. The, the reality is, and again, we know this from, from North Vietnamese materials, is that, that Hanoi itself decided to de-escalate after 68 because, because Tet had, had dealt its forces such a devastating blow. Mm. So, so the, the, the communists will, will, will practice what, what they officially called economy of forces, through 69, 70, 71. And, and what they'll do during that time, that time is kind of escalate the, what, what, what they call the other struggle, the, the, the diplomatic struggle. So that's when they start negotiating with the Americans. That's when they, they start engaging the international community. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, and, and this diplomacy is not, is not meant at the time to bring about the genuine peace settlement. It's, it's merely meant to kind of probe the Americans, to win over world opinion and to increase the pressure on now Richard Nixon to get out of Vietnam un- unconditionally. Mm-hmm. So, so, so they're, they're kind of they're kind of temporizing. And then in '72, what they decide to do by 1972, the, the leadership in Hanoi is confident that that uh, their 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 forces have rebuilt themselves, have consolidated themselves. Uh, and, and, and what Hanoi does in, 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 in March of 72 is launch another cat-like major campaign to win the war. Uh, it's, it's the so-called Nguyen Way campaign, as, as the Vietnamese call it. Uh, in the U.S., we refer to it as the Easter Offensive of, of 1972. Uh, and, and again, right, we, we know from communist sources that the purpose of that offensive was to win the war, was to, was to basically kind of, you know, occupy big chunks of southern Vietnam, 
and forced the regime in Saigon to, to, to surrender. So at this point, the American forces, they leave in 73, is that correct? They basically... They do, yeah. So, so, so this, 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 this Easter offensive is another disaster for Hanoi, for mm-hmm. communist forces. Uh, but, but at the same time, right, to make it a disaster, the U.S. had to bomb extensively. Uh, it, it, it basically makes it, makes it to, to kind of escalate the war at a time when people thought that the U.S. was getting out of the war. Mm-hmm. So by, by early 73, pretty much everyone uh, in, in Hanoi and in Washington need this war to come to an end. So, so an agreement is signed, the so-called Paris Peace Agreement, mm-hmm. that provides for the extrication of, of U.S. forces, the return of prisoners of war. And then leaves all Vietnamese political matters to be resolved by the Vietnamese themselves. Mm-hmm. So, so, so I mean, effectively, the Paris Peace Agreement allows Nixon to claim peace with honor, uh, but it doesn't really resolve the fundamental differences separating the Vietnamese. And so, shortly after the Americans have gone home, the prisoners have been returned. War resumes in Vietnam, but at that point, it's purely a civil war between North and South. And within two years, the North prevails, and 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 Saigon collapses, and then and then Vietnam is reunified. Under, under communist authority. Were there, in that brief period, were there any battles or major uh, battles where the North Vietnamese didn't succeed, or did they basically win everything at this point until they reached Saigon? So, so it, it, it's relatively low-intensity warfare mm. through 73, 74, mostly because North Vietnam is afraid the Americans might come back. Mm. So, so, so the North Vietnamese are fighting the South Vietnamese regime, but, but it's relatively low-intensity. Uh, but then, but then in late '74, early '75, they start. By, once they're certain the Americans aren't coming back, uh, mostly because of Nixon being embroiled in Watergate and then eventually re- resigning, mm-hmm. then then they launch these big campaigns. And 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 arguably, you know, in in in, in communist lore, one of the most famous campaigns is the so-called Ho Chi Minh campaign, which is the last campaign of the war that that led to to the fall of of Saigon. Mm-hmm. That was preceded by another campaign in the Central Highlands, but the, 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 so, the so-called Ho Chi Minh campaign uh, of, of, of spring 1975 is, is, is essentially what ends up kind of sealing the fate of, of, of South Vietnam. Well, um, tell me, can you, can, where can people find you on the net, and what books have you written on this subject? So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a faculty member at San Diego State University. Mm-hmm. Uh, people can, can, can find my contact information there. Uh, and then uh, I've got I've got three books that essentially focus on 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 the communist perspective in the war. I've, I've written a book about the secret negotiations to end the war. I've written a book on on it's entitled Hanoi's Road to the Vietnam War that looks at the 54 to 64 period and and, and how you know that that, that that 10 year period between the time the French leave and the Americans come in. And then my last book, uh, which which uh, is kind of a a survey of everything the communists tried to do from the time of the war against France until the end of the war against the U.S. and beyond. That's entitled uh, Vietnam's American War a History. Mm-hmm. And that came out, I think, about a couple of years ago with Cambridge. Okay. Well, um, again, thank you so much for speaking with me. This has been uh, very interesting. Hey, my, my pleasure, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, Military History Inside Out, please subscribe to it and rate it if you can. If you want more military history ranging from the ancient to the modern, please visit warscholar.org or militaryhistorypodcast.com to sign up for my weekly newsletter and keep track of my latest posts. You can also find written interviews and my social media links there. Thanks for listening.